And I never thought I would say this, but in the Northeast, the 118 to 126 pound female fighting divisions have really heated up in recent years. And, and, and actually, a lot of times the, the lower weight females will throw a lot of punches and make it very exciting for the fans. And her coming from New York, I know the New York amateur system, there's a lot of females involved there. So I'm sure she has quite a bit of experience, even though it's a pro debut. Well, for the official ring introductions, we send it inside the ropes to Jamie Bellavo. Ladies and gentlemen, the next bout is four rounds of boxing in the flyweight division. And your man in charge at the bell, referee Johnny Callis. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black and white trunks. She weighed in at 116 pounds, making her professional debut. Haley from the Aquasasni Mohawk Nation. Here is Michelle Cole. And her opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks trimmed with white. She weighed in at 117 pounds. Her professional record, one win with zero defeats. Hailing from Groton, Connecticut, here is Marsha Agrippa. Marsha Agrippino enters the ring to plenty of fanfare as she hails from nearby Groton, Connecticut. Her opponent is Messina, New York's Michelle Cook. Peter Zimbor and Ted Panajardis ringside calling the action. Our referee is Johnny Kalish for this four round scheduled contest. Agrippino wearing the red trunks, Cook wearing the black trunks with the white and gray trim. Agrippino with the very reputable Peter Manfredo Sr. working her corner tonight. And, and seeing him in the corner, you know that she got some really good sparring because he also trains uh, uh, Shelly Vincent, who's going to be fighting later on tonight, as well. I know he works with Callie Reese, who's going to be fighting for a world title coming up. So. She got some good sparring in the gym for this fight. Yeah, Manfredo's really cornered the market, it seems, for top-notch female fighters in New England. Definitely. Nice right hand, courtesy of Agrippino. Right off the bat, you can see she definitely has a, a good amateur background, uh, Michelle. Um, she came to win this fight tonight, for sure. And I think that I'm, I could be mistaken, but I think I see blood trickling above the left eye of Michelle Cook from the get-go. I'll have to see a closer look. I can't see anything yet, but she's on the farther side of the ring. But she's landing a lot of nice shots here, as they both are. Perhaps my eyes were deceiving me. Agrippino coming forward in the red trunks. Nice right hand by Cook. Another nice right hand by Cook. You could tell Cook has a lot of uh, amateur experience just by watching her fight, you know, landing those one point, one, one punch shots there, nice pot shots for the points with the judges. When Cook entered the ring tonight, it was nearly silent in the Fox Theater. When Agrippino entered the ring near pandemonium, didn't seem to phase Cook by the way she's fighting in round one. No, not at all. And that's a, a sign of experience, you know, if this was her first fight, completely first fight, you, you'd see it, but she obviously has some amateur background and she's been in front of crowds before. I'm sure she's been in front of hostile crowds before. Round one about to come to conclusion, just two minute rounds in female boxing, so they have less time to work, but a very spirited round. Nice left hand by Cook snaps the head of Agrippino around again. And while Agrippino may have had more quantity in her punches thrown throughout round one, I think that Michelle Cook landed the more quality punches. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. She landed punches that made Agrippino step back, made her head step back. Uh, whether that's an amateur fight or a professional fight, those are going to score points right there. And I, and I think she had a very nice round that first round. Peter Manfredo, the lead trainer in the corner of Agrippino on your corner. 
applying the end swell to the left eye of Agrippino as you see some swelling starting to form. Yeah, she's already got a nice little knot over that uh, left eye right there. A very spirited and fun round though, for sure. That was a great two minutes of boxing to watch. Two girls that uh, are very skilled. It's like watching, you know, regular boxing. It's not, you know. Round two of the scheduled four-rounder between Marsha Agrippino in the red trunks and Michelle Cook in the black trunks here at the Fox Theater at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Agrippino the aggressor in the opening moments of round two. As was the case in the opening moments of round one, Cook took her time, but eventually picked her spots and picked them well. Agrippino's defense this round has been her offense. She's letting those punches go, not giving Cook really a chance to answer back. Nice right hand on the inside from Cook, but it doesn't seem to phase Agrippino at all. Yeah, Cook hasn't landed anything of substance here in the second round that could be considered on the level of anything she landed in the first round. No, not at all. Agrippino's completely controlling this round for sure. And it's not that Agrippino is hurting or walloping Cook, though. There she lands a nice right hand and a few punches to follow. Left hand. But ring generalship, I think, is controlled by Marsha Agrippino here in round two. And then to boot, she lands some good shots upstairs on top of that. Yeah, most definitely. Agrippino continuously looks more comfortable in there and more confident. It's going to be really tough for Cook to get this fight back. She's going to have to do something drastic to start the next round. Round two comes to a conclusion, and following a good opening round by Michelle Cook, Agrippino responds with a good second frame. I want to ask you your opinion on this, Ted. Agrippino has her hair in cornrows, which is normally what you see a lot of female fighter sport when competing, and a lot of male fighters who have long hair, as it doesn't allow your hair to get into your face and get in the way of obstructing your vision when you're taking a look at your opponent. Cook, you can see, wearing her hair, hair a lot more loose. You don't often see that. No, and, and it, it, you don't see it for a reason, because it's obviously distracting her, which gets hit, the hair's flying in her face. Um, I, I, don't, I don't recommend that at all, because it's definitely hindering her. Um, whether it does right now or later on, but that hair's gonna be in front of her eyes, she's gonna miss a punch, she's gonna get cracked. Um, that hair should definitely be tied back a little bit better. Her hair looks good but you want to be effective in a boxing yeah, match. Right now, the most important thing is winning, and uh, that's not putting you in a great position to win when your hair's flying in front of your eyes. Nicely left by Cook. But it's Agrippino coming forward once again. I think the first round, Agrippino let Cook fight her fight, which is the one, two shots here and there, pot shotting almost uh, as if it was an amateur fight to score those nice uh, points and getting away. And uh, she didn't put up with that second round. She came right out throwing, throwing leather, and she's doing the same right now. Although nice lead right hand from Cook right there. That was a nice left hand upstairs by Agrippino, but a nice right hand from Cook. A nice left hook from Cook right there, too. And now we're seeing some more shots that are stopping these ladies in their tracks. Wow, that was a big right hand. I think Cook's realizing she has to land some big shots right now to get this fight back in her favor.
what those punches are doing too, it's making Agrippino think twice about rushing in as she did in that second round, which is, is obviously the output level going down for this round. And once again here in round three, as was the case in round one, it might be a conversation in the judge's head following the round of quality versus quantity. Right. Although, even quantity-wise, I think uh, Cook might have landed a little bit more that round. Crowd on its feet here at the Fox Theater at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Very entertaining round of boxing between Marsha Agrippino and Michelle Cook. Ted, who do you give that round to? That was a very, very close round, but at the end of the day, this is a, a fight that it, it's tough to call. But I think that Cook landed some big shots that round, snapped her head back. Um, I think overall, Tough call, but I would probably give her that round, so I'd have it two to one for Cook at the moment. And in that highlight sequence we just showed, you saw a straight right hand from Cook snap back the head of Agrippino, followed by two left hands. So that goes in line with your way of thinking that Michelle Cook is ahead in this fight, two rounds to one. But round one was clear cut, in my opinion. Round two is clear cut. Round three, I think, could have gone either way. So even though you and I may have Cook ahead by a round, that's not to say she's necessarily ahead on the judges' score. Cards. No, round, round four, the final round is about to begin. And I don't know if you noticed this, but after we talked about this in between the last round, Cook's hair that was tied up started to become loose as that round progressed. I think they actually tightened her hair tie in, the be in, in between round three and round four. I think they had to because her hair got loose right here in the corner. And um, it, it's definitely going to be a problem for her if it, it gets loose in the middle of this round because she needs this round if she wants to have a shot to win this fight. Much respect to both of these women for putting it all on the line, and particularly fighting in such an evenly matched fight so early on in their young careers. Agrippino just won to know Cook making her pro debut tonight in her opponent's hometown, no less. I, I think what happens with the female fighters is they have to do that. There's not as many female fighters, so I think they have to start taking chances a little bit earlier, and in their eighth, ninth fight, they can even fight for a world title. That hair is already coming loose again, and it's just not a good idea. She, in the future, she might want to think about getting that braided or, or, or something. Nice right hand right there. Less than a minute to go here in this fight. Alexandra Lopes, a highly touted welterweight female boxer from the area. Her pro debut was against Kali Reese, who fights for a world title in just a few days. Ironically, she fights for a world title against the girl that just beat Lopes for the world title. Ooh. And that's just an example of the risk that these female fighters have to take in terms of opposition very early on in their career. Some nice exchanges here, but at the end of every exchange, it seems that Cook lands that big last final shot. But her hair is completely loose again, and, and uh, luckily the, the round, end of the round is coming here. Nice right hand by Cook. Yeah, Cook, is, Cook finished this round very strong. Very strong. The thing with the hair, even for male fighters, is if the judge is on a different side and can't see what's happening to your face, and you get hit with a shot that you might actually block with your glove, but your hair goes flying, you know, that they could think, oh, he got hit with that punch. You don't want to give any chance that, that they're going to consider you getting hit with a shot that you don't get hit with. Michelle Cook's corner say, celebrate in the ring, you won that fight. And we'll see if the judges agree. I, I agree. Um, it was a good fight. I thought Agrippino fought a good fight, but she let her get off a little bit more, especially in those last two rounds there. Round four, do you give the Cook as well? I gave the Cook as well. So on Ted's scorecard, three rounds to one, 39-37. Michelle Cook over Marsha Agrippino. We'll see if the official judges here at Foxwoods Resort Casino Agree, although that third round, like you said, really could go either way. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Fox Theater, we go to the judges' scorecard at the end of four rounds. <laughs> Judge Bill Morardi scores about 38-38. Judge, Judge Peter Harry scores about 38-38. <laughs> Judge Robin Taylor scores about 37-39 for your winner. By majority mis decision, Michelle Cook. 
So we are perplexed because he announced two even scorecards, which would make it a draw, but he announced Michelle Cook as the winner by majority decision. So clearly the scorecards he announced were not right, or he misinterpreted the reading of the scorecards. I think it was a misinterpretation of the scorecards because the commission took it back and didn't say anything. Um, well, we're going to need... They're definitely going to have to clarify that one way or the other. Yeah, we're going to need point. a clarification on that for sure. He read the scorecards correctly, I believe, but for some reason he announced Michelle Cook as the winner. So we'll send it to our ring announcer again, I believe, for a clarification. Yeah, I believe, I believe it's going to be a draw. Yeah, the, the commission's taking a further look at those scorecards. So we will go inside the ring once again, I believe, where we're going to have a clarification on the scorecards. We go to Jamie Beliveau. Ladies and gentlemen, we must apologize for the misreading of the scorecard. We have a majority draw. So the scorecards were correct. Two judges saw it 38 to 38, which we said was possible, and one judge had it 39 to 37 for Michelle Cook, which we had. So very accurate, good judging from the commission here at Foxwoods Casino, and Michelle and Cook fights to a draw with Marsha Agrippino in our second fight of the like evening. Know, very spirited about that. I'd like to see like that to fight see again. This Perhaps fight a rematch is in the future time. as the crowd responds very favorably to that suggestion. Marsha Agrippino and Michelle Cook fight to a draw in our second bout of the evening here at the Fox Theater.